Hello, this is a quick video to go over the communication in our robot for TFA Robotics Academy um, in Vancouver, Canada. The competition is going to be next week from February the 17th. It starts and it will end on February the 22nd, I believe, or 21st. Okay, I'll start this. Um, and this is going to go through like the communication strategy that we used in the competition that's going to happen in the next week. Okay, so as you can see, all the robots are different basically. Um, they're acting differently. They're not having like the same strategy. And the question is, how did we do this? So we found two options that we thought that maybe we could use. The first one was using the emitter and receiver because we used, uh, we saw that, okay, WeBot has this nice device called the receiver and the emitter. Maybe we can implement them together and we can see if we can like work together um, and like communicate through emitter and receiver. That didn't work. Um, I think that's because the world that we looked in to, it only works for like, I think two things. It's only available for the supervisor robot or the supervisor code. And so that didn't work. And then the second option that we used or thought of was getting a server and connecting it all to our robot. But that was also like kind of far fetched. Um, and we didn't think that we had enough time nor the, um, I, I think, I think we mostly were thinking that we should focus on the actual game, um, like the, the technique and stuff more than the communication, because we also found a better option. We thought, um, in this competition, which was sufficient, I guess. And, and that, that option was to communicate through the given GPS values, which we were fortunate to have enough to have. Um, in a regular competition, I don't think we would have GPS values um, that accurate at, at the very least. Um, and this competition we do. So we were like, might as well use that and communicate there. So basically, as you can see, the robots head back, the farthest robot heads back um, from the ball heads back towards the center to do the lack of progress relocation. And that's very important in our strategy because we basically communicate via the distances of the GPS values. So this robot is the farthest away. So therefore it can go to the closest to the center. Whereas these two robots are the closest. So, or before they were the closest, so they can attack the ball basically. And then as you can see here, the farthest robot might have like a different strategy, it might um, uh, approach the ball at a longer distance or farther distance. Um, and then basically this is how we assign like kind of a role, but not exactly a role, like a role as in um, defending, attacking, middle field, those kind of roles, but they're all based on the uh, distances that are given by the GPS values. And this is really, um, crucial in our algorithm um, a lot of what we've done so far is based on the values that we've been given and in a real competition our, the values wouldn't be as like accurate we wouldn't be able to know okay exactly where this robot was at the exact time and that's one of the cool things about this simulation that we're given the gps values yeah so i hope you see how we did communication in this competition um and yeah thanks for watching